This is the Investment Spotlight Show on Resilient Advisor. My name is Jay Coulter, and my partner in the show, as always, is Chris Versace. For this interview, we spoke with the CEO of Home Bistro, which trades under the symbol HBIS. Chris, what were your takeaways from this interview? Well, you know, it's fascinating because I think a lot of people tend to think at first blush, they, they'll compare Home Bistro to Blue Apron, Hello Fresh, And that's, you know, as, as they'll listen and learn, that is not the business whatsoever. I, I think what's fascinating is that they're, they're going higher end, uh, which, I, which I, I, I can appreciate. But what was surprising is the length of time that their meals actually are good for right? It doesn't mean you need to necessarily buy everything at once. You can space it out, try some things. But the other aspect of it is the notion that they've made, you know, a recent acquisition, they're likely to do more to round out their offering. But the one that they have bought model meals is, is something that I think can really drive a lot of repeat business for them. And, and they're in their process of, of uh, what I would say is restarting that business as well. Small, but they won't. They look to take it national across their existing footprint. So I, I think there's a lot going on here, and uh, you know, like any type of product here, you know, consumers or investors are going to want to pay attention to what's going on and the the input costs. In this case, whether it's going to be really shipping or or ingredients, especially the protein complex. But I I, I think this. This is a company that I can say, Jay, is not at all what people might think it is based on hearing the name. Yeah, and I thought his answers around the questions about supply chain issues and inflation mitigation were very interesting. As you look at this through the Tomatica lens, did, did it touch on any themes that were really uh, apparent? Yeah, you're very funny, Jay. You know, uh, it, it hinges, uh, sorry, it, it tips right into our cleaner living theme. Uh, I actually brought that up with Zalmi. Uh, when we spoke with him and he sees that already. So it's, you know, from a point of confirmation for Tomatica's Cleaner Living theme, here we go. I hope you enjoy this interview. Jay Coulter and Chris Versace do not own any interest in the companies that they interview at the time of the recording or 30 days after the initial release of the show. Today, Chris Versace and I are speaking with Zalmi Duchman, who is the CEO of Home Bistro, which trades under the symbol H-B-I-S. Now, Zalmi, my partner, Chris Versace, will do the majority of the interviewing, given his Wall Street analyst background, and you'll see he's very good at asking a question set. So I want to start off with two questions. Number one, would you please pronounce your last name? Because I clearly am struggling to pronounce it. And number two, would you please outline the investment thesis for financial advisors and investors looking at your company? Sure. So the first question is pretty easy. It's Zalmi Duchman. Um, and that is my name. And so Home Bistro is a meal delivery service. We ship gourmet meals all over the country. We actually run two brands. We have the Home Bistro brand, which is focused on celebrity chefs and high-end dinners. And we ship nationwide. And our other brand that we acquired earlier this year is called Model Meals, which is a more of a diet meal delivery service, which delivers in three states, California, Arizona, and Nevada. And we actually just launched them national as well. So we also ship them national. So, you know, we're in the meal delivery space, which is a hot and growing space. And in general, it's always been a growing space. And obviously it's kind of taken it a little quicker in terms of acceleration, you know, being that more people learned about it when they were forced to stay at home. Um, so, you know, that's the space that we're in and I'm an operator. And, and I've been in the food business for 15 years. Well, let's, let's, let's chat about that a little bit. So um, based on your background, you know, there are a bunch of other um, meal delivery or meal kidding services out there. HelloFresh, you know, is, is one in particular, um, and, you know, and they're, they're quite, uh, quite good, quite tasty. And, I, you know, they have the ability to customize. What, what did you see that said, I need to do this now, and I'm going to start with celebrity chefs in particular, which... Uh, being someone who's in a younger day watched a lot of Food uh, Network, I can certainly understand that. Um, but why why bring that to the market? Sure. So as I mentioned, I've been in this space for 15 plus years. I had a previous company called The Fresh Diet, and you know I think first you really need to understand the different segments within the industry, right? And you mentioned meal kits, right? I don't really look at meal kits as anything close to what we do, right? Meal, meal kits are much more just competing with the grocery stores and meal kits are not convenient. You're doing all the work. 
Uh, it's not something that you're, you know, doing every single day for most people. Um, so you really have a lot of different, like you said, in the meal delivery space, all, you know, the meal kits, you have frozen, you have fresh. Um, the way I look at it is everybody's kind of operating in the same space when it comes to prepared heat and eat meal prep is what they call it, right? Which is you have a meal, you get it, you pop it in the microwave, you pop it in the oven, you eat it. And everyone in that space has, is really focused on fitness and diet. And they're really focused on a full solution that is a subscription where you're getting breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're trying to lose weight. You're trying to pump, pump up. And that's business that I was in and pretty much all of our com competition is in. Home Bistro is totally different, right? Home Bistro is not, we're not in the health business. Model Meals is, but Home Bistro is not. Home Bistro is a alternative for dinner. And right now you have Uber Eats, you have Grubhub, you have frozen dinners, you have cooking at home. But really, when you look at what are you going to do for dinner, what's the average person, especially you know, over 40, over 50, which is the home bistro customer, what are they doing, right? What's their, what's their good option, right? In the meal delivery space, there, there was no good option there. They're not looking for a diet. They're not looking for fitness meals. So that was kind of how I got into home bistro and why I thought it was a really good opportunity. And home bistro was around before me. It, 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 it was a company called Dinewise. It was a company called home bistro. They actually sold uh, meals via catalog, and they've been in this space kind of by themselves for a while. And I got involved because, like I said, I saw a big opportunity there. And I came in and I said, "Look, we can't compete with marketing dollars. There's all these meal delivery services spending on Google. We need to have a niche, and we need to have have a way to get out there. And you have all these celebrities, and they do tequila, and they do restaurants, but none of them are really in the space. And that's kind of when I said to myself, "Let's." you know, let's try this and let's start reaching out to some celebrity chefs and see if it would interest in them. And we had, you know, great response. Um, of course, the pandemic hit and, you know, a lot of these chefs had nothing else to do. So it was a perfect opportunity. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I would think that was a massive boon for your business because I, I, I know, just personally speaking, that I, I, I would get there like, you know, 4, 30, 5 o'clock and I'm like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been home all day. I'm, I really want something good to eat, but I don't want to make it. Yep. So yeah. I mean, look, they say that the internet was accelerated. E-commerce was accelerated by like 10 years, right? I think meal delivery was, is probably 10 X the regular e-commerce because it's something that people were not familiar with. I've been in it since 2005 and I could tell you for the first 10 years, Anytime I would talk about my business, people were like, well, like they didn't, even, you know, there wasn't Uber Eats then. So they just even couldn't wrap their head around what I right. did. Obviously, well, there, was, there, there was pizza and Chinese food, right? Let's, exactly. let, 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 let's just call it what it is. Exactly. And then, you know, Uber Eats, Blue Apron, and everybody started right. you know, understanding it. And then once COVID hit, I think a lot more people tried a meal delivery service than ever before. Uh, again, because really, what options do they have? And, and even Uber Eats you know, was having issues with restaurants. And look, at the end of the day, Uber Eats is expensive. Uber Eats is, I mean, it's mind numbing when I go on there and I want to know what's for lunch. It takes me at least 20 minutes to figure it out, what I'm ordering, how I'm ordering it. By the time it comes, is it, is it cold? Is it hot? That's lunch. Dinner, I don't know many families that would order Uber Eats for dinners. It's unaffordable, maybe single people. So again, this is something that when you hear it, you're like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But until then, like you're thinking, well, what, what do people do? Right. And it is, it's right. frozen dinners, it's frozen dinners. It's obviously cooking, but this so, is something you can do a few times a week. You don't have to do it every night. So, so Zelly, help us understand, you know, what sets your offering apart really. So if it's not frozen, if it's not a mind numbing catalog, right. What is the service? What are people getting and what's the value prop to the consumer? Sure. So what they're getting is they're getting a skin packed meal that is, has a shelf, have, has life in the fridge for about three weeks. So when you order it, technically you can leave it in your fridge for three weeks. You can put it in the freezer and it's good for six months. Really it's good forever. Um, so, so right off the bat, you have something where you're not forced to use it right away. And I found in my previous business, which was fresh and not 
that can pack or skin pack or in blue aprons, meal kits and that kind of stuff. Hello fresh. People have this fear of, Oh my God, I need to eat it right away. Right? Well, like it, 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 it's, panic. it's, it's use it or lose it within a couple of days. Exactly. And it's like a panic, you know, and, and, I, and I know a lot of people that, that felt that way and they stopped ordering. So that's the number one thing. The number one thing is you're, you order it and you know that you have it whenever you need it. And then it's the fact that it's high quality, restaurant quality, gourmet food. Again, we're not, Model Mills is, but Home Bistro is not a diet company, right? We obviously, we have our nutrition on uh, labels on each meal. We're cognizant of, of, of what we are putting in your body. We work with, with the chefs. We work with the nutritionists. We, want, we don't want to, you know, make it unhealthy, but at the end of the day, we're not selling a diet meal and all the no, chefs. You're, you're, you're selling taste. Correct. Exactly. We're selling taste. So the offering is a convenient, high quality gourmet meal from a chef that you recognize and that you follow and that potentially you can never get because you potentially live in middle America and you don't have the opportunity to go to their restaurant in New York and you've never tasted their food. And we have chefs that are on TV and it's exciting for people. So, you know, there's a lot of people that for them, that's part of it. And for them, they don't even care. They just, they just want a high end gourmet meal that again, you can't get anywhere else. So how many celebrity chefs do you have now in home bistro? Sure. So we've announced um, five. We've, we're only, a, a launched two, and that doesn't that doesn't count um, Hungry Fan, which is, you know, kind of we have a chef from Hungry Fan. Her name is Dana, and it's a sports um, themed meals. But, but without her, because that's more of like a brand partnership, we have five celebrity chefs. So we've already launched uh, Kakora, which was our first. We've launched Claudia Sandoval, uh, and she's uh, Mexican descent, and she does Mexican cuisine. And it's fantastic. Um, and then we're launching three more that we've already announced. Um, Aisha Curry is the most exciting one. Again, not, you know, we wouldn't call her a chef. She doesn't call herself a chef, but she's has a cookbook and she's, you know, really into food and, and she's much more of a lifestyle, um, you know, person influencer. And then we have Richard Blaze, who is on Top Chef, who has a show launching on Fox with Gordon Ramsay in early January. That's very exciting. We'll be launching that at about the same time. And then we have Chef Roble uh, Ali, who had a show on Bravo for two seasons, and he's got some really, really cool stuff. Uh, I, I, I didn't hear Stanley Tucci, who's all the rage. Me neither. So if you uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me know what I, you can do for it. I, I, I actually just finished uh, listening to his book, Taste. It was, it was fantastic. And I found myself... Uh, um, rewinding to recreate some of the recipes that he's done. They're, they're, they're quite good. And I, I would, one man's opinion, I would okay. recommend it. Good to know. Listen. So, so how long are these chefs locked up for? Is it, is it a two, three year contract? A high, and I assume it's a licensing uh, deal with, with, with their brand, their image. Yeah. So I don't think any of that information is public. So obviously I have to, um, you know, stay aware of what I say in sure, terms sure. of what's public and what's not. Um, but in general, um, it's a it's a, a much more of a partnership than a licensing deal. Um, you know, we 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 bring them into the business as equity partners. Uh, they're getting um, a royalty on what we sell. Uh, that you know, that's their meals. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously a length to it, but this is all based on personal relationships. So, okay. um, you know, it's so far the feedback from the chefs have been amazing. They they work with us. They're excited you know, whether it's social media or just development. And, you know, we're, we're very confident that any success is, you know, going to be for the long term with these chefs. Okay. Now they, they are responsible. It sounds like for some brand and marketing, but really the crux here is leveraging their, um, their notoriety. Right. But if you go one step and, and then building the recipes, I mean, that's, you know, we're, well, this that's, is not something, yeah, we're not just like taking their name and then building the recipes. And right. Right. Well, like, right. Well, that's, that's, that's where I want to get to. And there, 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 there's a couple parts to this, right? So you're, you're, you're taking a restaurant, restaurant quality celebrity chef recipe that they have curated. Right. And you, you guys are putting it together right into this. And ultimately to the consumer, it's in this skin pack that you said, correct? Correct. Okay. So do they specify the types of ingredients specifically for each recipe? And how do you manage, you know, what we've seen over the last, you know, couple months that, that word that Jay and I were talking about earlier, 
inflation, uh, particularly in the protein complex, but really, really across the food complex as well. Yeah, look, they definitely manage it. Um, they're extremely involved. I can tell you with Claudia Sandoval, it was a lot of work because, you know, she has the, these Mexican recipes and there's specific peppers and we have to source them. Right. Uh, and we go and we do what we can. Sometimes there are ingredients that don't work because of the skin pack or they don't work because of sourcing. Um, it doesn't happen that often. Um, in terms of, you know, pricing, we are a higher priced um, product you know, in general, um, again, it all depends on how you look at it. You know, you can go on Uber Eats and you can pay 30 bucks for, for a sandwich after all the fees and everything. Um, so we feel that, you know, at the end of the day, we are affordable, but we're not in that diet meal game where people are advertising $9 a meal and there's a race to the bottom, right? That's not the business that we're in with Home Bistro. We are just priced where we need to be. And so far, we have not been affected at all. Um, if for us, we feel that as we grow and our volume goes higher, we're going to actually be able to do a lot better when it comes to purchasing. Right. No, I would think, I would think economies of scales would take over and you'd be able to do that. So is, is your pricing, and I'm just curious because um, is it dynamic, right? Are you moderating the prices on a week-to-week -week or month-to-month -month basis, or is it more of a subscription option that anyone can get for so many meals in a month. Sure. So it's not subscription. Um, you know, okay. there, there is a way to like do an auto, you know, ship, um, but that's not what our focus is at Home Bistro. So you have two options. One option is you just pick the meals that you want. And the other option is we sell bundles. Um, so our prices don't change. Again, that doesn't mean they won't in the future, but they don't change. You know, we look at, you know, duck and chicken and, you know, we usually try to price them if you know the proteins are the same kind of in the same range and our pricing is you know between 16 17 20 they can go as high as 30 dollars a meal depending on what that protein is and, and you know what it costs us to buy it but again you know we do free shipping pretty much for for everyone at this point um so you know for some people they may think it's expensive but again if you really dig deep it's it's really not that expensive so let me ask you this. So a couple of questions for you. The business, I, I believe, kind of took off during the pandemic. You, you alluded to that. Are there any metrics that you've shared, say the number of you know, customers or number of repeat customers that you've had, uh, say, this year compared to 2020 or, or more importantly, say, 2019? I have to look at the press releases. That we've, we've had so many that it's hard to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you if you have anything in front of you, it would be great. I could tell you in general that sure. for us, um, customer reorders is something that we've been focusing on tremendously. Before, when the business was frozen and not skin packed, uh, it was definitely an issue for us. And since we've gone skin packed since I think that was like June or July, uh, we've seen tremendous. Um, positivity when it comes to customers reordering. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So let me just see here. I had another question for you. Um, so you, you said uh, that you're not really benefiting from any real economies of scale today with two chefs and you, you think you'll be able to get there when you have, when you double to four and then probably five, and then you add, I suspect your long-term target is to add more, but you also said though, that you have, um, the other business model meals. So there's no sourcing synergies between those two or oh, there definitely synergies? is. Yeah, okay. there definitely is. So we'll talk a little bit about the economies of scale. So the economies of scale are going to come from us growing as a business and spending more on marketing, you know, having more eyeballs, having more visits to the site and selling more meals. Obviously that's a combination of adding more chefs. And at the end of the day, using our capital to market PR, everything that a business does to, to get more customers. We are in our infancy, right? Although I've been here for three years, my first year was really spent cleaning up the previous business. The second year was spent bringing in the production. Before I came on, Home Beach Show was around for, I don't know, four years, five years. They never did their own production. They outsourced it. They were essentially a marketing company. Uh, my background was in operations. so. Bringing it in-house was a tremendous project. After that, 
and then we went public, which was obviously time consuming as well. We then upgraded our kitchen like next level, like, like, like 10 X um, that only happened in July 1st of this year. So we're in our infancy because we've only, re- and we did skin packing at the same so, time. So, so for all, right. You mentioned that earlier. So for all intents and purposes, this is a new company. Yes. This is a new company. This is a startup and we're just getting started. And then you have model meals and model meals. Like I said, their business, we have a kitchen in California and Santa Ana. Uh, Model Meals is not skin packed in terms of the original business. They ship uh, twice a week with a local courier to the three states that they deliver to. Only two months ago, we launched 10 recipes skin pack that we are shipping here in Florida nationwide. And those meals are Whole30, they're organic when they can be, they're grass fed, and they're all that exciting words that a lot of people like to hear. (laughs) <laughs> and we have tremendous, tremendous feedback and people are reordering and they're loving it. And there's a lot of customers from Model Mills that couldn't get it before. I, they're now able to get it. I could see, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that Model Meals, because that's a, a more of a lifestyle choice, that the, that the growth prospects there are probably greater. Um, the consumption of those products is probably more consistent, I would think. Whereas I think Home Bistro is a um, an experience, a dining, uh, um, a point of enjoyment, if you will. Right. Right. Is that? Yeah. Is look. That... Y- yes and no. One hundred percent. That is, it, like I like I said before, the diet meal delivery service. When it comes to subscription, these pe- people do it. It's, 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 it's the full solution. They're doing it all day long. There's uh, my business that I was right. in before was tremendous opportunity. We have that tremendous opportunity with model meals. At the same time, I have people that are on their 20th order with home bistro, right? There are people right. that right. order it over and over and over and over again. So yes, uh, home bistro can be more of an experience. You know, you have a company called gold belly, which is a really, you know, mm-hmm. large no, company. I've... There's really nothing else like it we're probably the closest thing to it, but we're, we're nothing like it, right? Because Gold Belly is literally a once a year potentially uh, purchase for a customer. We don't look at ourselves as a once a year purchase. Um, yeah. We look at ourselves as someone buys 20 meals, they put in their fridge, they put in their freezer, they use them when it works. And then when they realize they have two or three left, they're going to do it again. Um, so, model, yeah. So why, I'm just curious, you know, you, you're doing all of this work um, upgrading the kitchen, going to skin pack. The business model is very different than what you've done in the past, yet you've, through model meals, you've acquired them and you, you've drifted back into that business. So there, yeah. there has to be something there for you. There has to oh, be yeah. a reason. 100%. So I think it comes out to my background and what I'm looking to do and why I got involved with Phone Bistro. So after I sold my previous company in 2014 and, and eventually it shut down in 2016, I thought I would move on with my life and do something else. And I just couldn't get away from the space. And in 2018, I said that there is a massive opportunity in acquisitions in this space. And there's a roll-up strategy. There's tons Mm -hmm. of these businesses all around the country that are doing one, two, three, four, five million. I've been on every side of the business and I know how difficult it is for these entrepreneurs to exit. And I got involved with Home Bistro because the team there uh, had experience with the public markets and I came to them and I said, I want to get involved, but we need to be public because I want to make acquisitions. So I've always wanted to stay in the diet delivery space. It's just that Home Bistro was already in this blue ocean of gourmet meal. They, they were they were not a diet company. I mean, they were trying to say they were a health company, but they weren't. Their packaging wasn't there. They just weren't. So I, instead of saying, let's turn them into a diet company, I said, let's do this. Let's, let's do something sure, niche. Sure. And then at the same time, let's make acquisitions and stay in this business. Because at the end of the day, the kitchens can produce everything, right? They can do meal kits, they can do juices, they can do desserts, they can do anything out of the same kitchen, right? And you have this ghost kitchen, which is another exciting word that people like to say, but I'll tell you, you know what a ghost kitchen really is? A kitchen. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 excess capacity where they're trying to... Uh you know, it, it's just typical manufacturing, right? They, they, they have extra bandwidth. So they're, they're trying to uh, fulfill that uptime, put people to work, 
by manufacturing other products under right. a different brand name. I mean, that's all it is. Hundred percent. So, yeah, I, I have yet to try a ghost kitchen, um, but I, I am intrigued by a few. Um, so acquisitions, you, you said that several times. Uh, obviously, you're not going to tip your hand, but it, it sounds as if though that you, you're planning something. But you're a new company. You just got your first acquisition in the door. What's what's a realistic pace? Is is it one a year, perhaps, or maybe something less frequent? If I had no board, <laughs> it would be a very quick pace. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're we're a publicly traded company, and there's mm-hmm. you know very smart people involved that are um, pulling the reins on me and making sure that we do it the right way. So we just made this acquisition. You know, we just took the national. Um, you know, obviously, we're look always looking for opportunities, right. and we'll take it slow. And the, and you know, they're strategic. Um, there's no there's no specific metric. We want to do two a year. We want to do three a year. Right. We want right, to right, right. Right. we want so, to find so, the right ones. So, so you're opportunistic, right? So yeah. So when when you say that the right ones, there's a lot of different ways to define that, right? There there's geographic exposure. There there's a different type of cuisine. There's a, uh, a different um, bucket you had mentioned, juices, desserts, that sort of thing. Um, what, if you can, what, what are some of the qualities that you might look for? Yeah, look, I think for us, like you said, geographic is a, is a major part of it because obviously shipping costs are a big part of this business and a big, uh, you know, everybody knows how, how difficult shipping is today. So geographically, there's tremendous value in acquiring the right um, mm-hmm. company location, um, facility is a very big part of it, right? Like if, if there was an acqu- potential acquisition and I came to them and they had a shared kitchen, I'd be like, eh, you know what I mean? Like you, you don't really have your own kitchen. So the people, you know, we're, we're a small growing company. If there's an amazing person involved, I think for us, that's a, it's a big part of it. Um, and then the business model, you know, for us to see if there's a way to, you know, pop in our brands into their business model, you know, maybe they deliver in a different way. Uh, maybe their packaging is different. You know, the reverse, like we did with model meals, is there an opportunity to take their brand national? So it's all these different, you know, these different things definitely led by geographic and the, the team, because we're not looking to like just come in and let go of everyone and take over. We're looking for right. good people to join us and grow this business. So you just said something that caught my ear and it was on my question list. You, you said shipping cost. So two questions um, in order of, of the business magnitude, you know, obviously there, there's, there's people, but in terms of, um, you know, shipping ingredients, some other bucket, what, what, what's the impact on the business in terms of, wow, when, when this one starts to really move higher, we get hurt. Uh, you know, it's every business has risks, you know, to say we get hurt. You know, we, I feel that as prices rise, our, 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 you know, as our costs rise, our prices are going to have to rise and people are always have to buy food. You know, I just feel like, food, oh, yeah. you know, food is, is not something that you're just giving up. Obviously <laughs> it, it, it's the most true consumable product there is. Yeah. Um, I think shipping prices is always something that we have to look at, you know, okay. as more, you know, e-commerce grows and, you know, Amazon and FedEx and UPS and, you know, everything you see in the news every day, you know, my, my hand is on the pulse. I'm a logistics guy, you know, my previous business, half of my 300 employees were delivery drivers. Um, I know logistics. I, I'm always looking at the FedEx and the UPS and all the different rates in DHL. So of course, there's a massive risk when it comes to all e-commerce business on what happens if FedEx and UPS can't deliver your product. What, what, what's right. anyone going to do, right? So of course, that's something that keeps me up at night, but the world's going to end if, if FedEx and UPS can't deliver everybody's products. I mean, that's what, you know what I mean? Like, what, what are we going to do? At the same time, you know, there's, there are alternatives and there are companies that have reached out to me and there's, they're growing in terms of helping companies like myself um, with perishable uh, delivery. So it's, that's great to see. Um, besides that, you know, of course, food prices rising, shortages, all the stuff that we've seen over the last year and a half, um, are always a concern, but I think we're at the point, you know, we're a small enough business where I don't see us being affected by it anytime soon. And hopefully, you know, the world will get back to normal at some point. I, 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 I hope so too. So I, I just want to, uh, you brought up shortages 
you know, a lot of companies talk about the, the, imp the two big impacts are uh, freight costs, which we just talked about. But the other one is really supply chain shortages and the timing of getting products. Have you guys had any difficulty in getting ingredients? So we haven't. So that's the great thing about being in the food business, right? I have a lot of friends there in electronics or in furniture and they're crying and there's this, you know, Los Angeles stuff, they're, they're sitting on the ships. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, I make all my products in America. <laughs> it's food. We, you know, we can always get food. We're getting food from, you know, distributors, whether it's local or the big ones like Cisco, we've had mm -hmm. no shortages. I think for us, you know, the big risks are packaging, you know, because that's something that we don't make, right? Whether it's the boxes or the ice packs or the liners and the trays and the labels and the film. And it's just making sure that we are staying in front of any potential delays and making sure that we always have what we need in stock and having backup suppliers and, and all that stuff. So it's definitely a concern. It's definitely something that we have to worry about. Um, but thankfully, till now, we, we've had no issues because we are forward thinkers and, and we're making sure that we never get to the situation where it's like, oh, my God, we have no trays. <laughs> OK, no, I, I you know, I, uh, I I do have one. Let me just double check here. I think I've got one uh, final question for you um, and then a suggestion if I could. Sure. Rick. OK, so the, the, the final question is. It, it, well, it's eight part, two parts. If I was to go on to Home Bistro and you and I wanted to be wowed, won over, what do I order? I do hear um, from a lot of customers and you know the team. Um, there's just so many great options, especially the celebrity chefs. They say the Claudia Sandoval skirt steak dish is amazing. But Model Mills, we, right now we only have 10 recipes that you could order nationally. We will have a lot more uh, come next year, early on, all 10 meals have gotten incredible feedback. So there's okay. no reason to just try one. Okay. No, no, I, I'm once we're, believe me, one, the minute we're done, I will be, uh, Googling away. Um, okay. Suggestion. Okay. Here it comes. And you, you, you might have this with, uh, model meals, but we, we at Tomatica have a, an, an investment theme. It's called cleaner living where we're looking for, um, natural, organic, non-GMO um, products. And it, it, we're, we're not alone in thinking about these types of products. We just look for the investment opportunity in them. But I, I, I think as a growing growing area, I think whether it's, you said Whole360, I think you, you, you mentioned Whole a couple 30. others. Whole30, sorry. Um, that whole, whole notion of cleaner living is, is something that I, I think I, I would suggest you guys look into. I, when, when large companies ranging from you know, Coca-Cola, Walmart, and the others are pivoting their product portfolios into this, it's worth noting. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I mean, we made the founders of Model Meals, our CMO and CFO. Um, you know, our website is, it's, it needs a major improvement, which we've hired an agency and we're going to be relaunching the website very soon. Um, at the end of the day, we know, and I know because I've been in the industry for a long time, that the Model Meals brand has tremendous opportunity nationally. You know, if you look at some of our competitors and the growth that they've had, um, that's what they're focused on, organic and, and you know, all those, those fun things. So um, 100%, um, I'm, I'm fully uh, in line with, with that suggestion. I appreciate it. Nope, happy to do it. Jay, anything? You know, I don't have any follow-up questions, Zalmi. I'm sure you can see why Chris handles the question sets here. He's really good at helping break down a company. I feel like I have a better understanding of your business and the opportunities here in the space. So we appreciate you coming on the Investment Spotlight Show. Thank you one so thing, much. One, one, one last thing, one last sure. thing. Um, we're, I wanna reserve the right to have you back on in about six to 12 months because you, you are, I, I think, A, an interesting company. B, you're, as you said, you're in your infancy. You're going to roll nationally. You're going to have more product to talk about, maybe even a whole other business line. Sure. I, I'd be happy to come anytime. And I could tell you that there's so much we didn't even cover. It's it just this in this business, it, it's just, it's very, very unique where there's so much going on at any given time. So I'm always happy to come back. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming Thank on. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a great week and happy holidays. Same to you. Bye-bye.
Important information. The information provided is for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute investment advice and it should not be relied on as such. It should not be considered a solicitation to buy or an offer to sell a security and you should consult your attorney or tax advisor. All information has been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but its accuracy is not guaranteed. There is no representation or warranty as to the current accuracy, reliability, or completeness of, nor liability for, decisions based on such information, and it should not be relied on as such. Pinger Systems, LLC, doing business as Resilient Advisor, was compensated for the production 